Hello everyone, Treex here. Welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. We are still in Dungeon 7, called Jabu Jabu's Belly. One of the more tedious dungeons to do in this game because of the water level mechanics. <laughs> and today we are going to continue with that and hopefully even finish it off. Because, um, yeah, because of me not liking this place so much, I'd rather actually go out of here quickly. <laughs> So, let's hope that we're able to do so. Shall we get started? Okay, get back to the main part of the room is quite easy. Just use this thing over here. And now, let's go check out why we want the water level to even go beyond the second floor. Let's finally go to the room south of here. You've been wondering what was here, right? <laughs> well, uh, this island over here... It's not colored yellow for nothing. We've seen it on the first floor already. This one actually floats up depending on what the current water level is. And only at its highest point it will actually reach the third floor. And therefore giving us the ability to grab this key. Otherwise not possible. So you cannot do this sooner. <laughs> okay, um, next up. Wrong button. Go me. <laughs> uh, that's just over there. Second floor is flooded, so, um... Yeah, I think I know how to get there. Going down. That will actually mean taking a swim <laughs> this time around. And be careful for the spikes. Even while swimming, you can still hit them. So, still use your long switch to actually get past them. Let's go across this corridor once again. Not for the first time, but it is uh, still new, because this time we are swimming. Making it kind of new. <laughs> Let's go across this gap, which we can do, because we are swimming. <laughs> Next we want to go left. Yeah, indeed. This is actually the room where the boss door is, however it's on the higher ledge, so we don't have to bother actually getting to it right now. <laughs> don't even have the key yet. It's something we're working on right now. The final thing we still need to do in this dungeon, getting the boss key. For that we actually need a flooded second floor. And I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Go over here. And then over here. And yeah, here we go. And this is the reason why you want the second floor flooded. <laughs> Otherwise there's no way to actually reach this block and reach this key. You can only swim over the endless pit, and nothing else. <laughs> and that will give us three keys. Now it's time to actually start making our way towards um, all those key doors that we saw on the third floor. And therefore we need to make our way back again, the same pathway we came, <laughs> unfortunately. And this is how we get over here. <laughs> Stupid crap thought he was able to race against me. <laughs> Next. No, 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 I want to go over here. I always get lost in this place. <laughs> Ow. Oh. That is just my impatience. <laughs> and this too. <laughs> Such an impatient player. Okay. Go away. I'm pretty sure I've killed you twice already, so... This is the start of a very long corridor of key doors. <laughs> Every single lock we need to open with our keys. We need three of them, so make sure you have three of them the moment you start, otherwise you're going to get stuck. <laughs> Ow. I lost my short beams, thank you. <laughs> well, at least the boss key gotten, so we finally can get out of this place. See if I can heal up, because I want my short beams back. 
No, not a heart. As if the game knows. <laughs> now, time to actually find that boss door. We do know which screen it's on. Now we just need to actually get ourselves to the higher ledge. So we can actually get ourselves to the door. Make sure the second floor is flooded. There's no need to actually change that back. We actually want the second floor to stay flooded. Now, let's go see if we can make a way around. Going towards the square where the boss symbol is on the map. And that is too easy. <laughs> actually need to go around in order to get to that higher ledge. Allow me to show you. Go right over here. Back to this pit over here. That we actually also took to get to the mini boss. Remember that. <laughs> that will actually bring us right over here on the map. Northern part of the first floor. And this is the room adjacent to it on the second floor. Kind of indicating where we are north of the boss door, as you can see. <laughs> and over here we actually want to surface, because as you can see there are some tiles which are different colors. And therefore we have the ability to surface in the room north of the boss. And from here we can actually get to a higher ledge. Hopefully find yourself some health, like a fairy. <laughs> and then make a way around. Make sure not to jump off, because otherwise you need to go around again. And there we are. Ladies and gentlemen, that was level 7, Jabu Jabu's Belly. With the exception of one thing, beating the boss. <laughs> and this is what we have to face. Of course, the dungeon item is once again going to be the key to actually defeat this guy. <laughs> As you can see, he will switch around between blue and red. And we simply need to use our long switch to make him hit his own orb. Only works if he's the opposite color, by the way, so... Make sure to hit him with his alternate color. If you change him twice, because of you missing the first time for instance, it won't work. You do need to make sure it's the opposite color. So one switch is usually enough. Uh, no you don't. <laughs> and gotcha. One of the easier bosses in this game, luckily. The dungeon itself is already so annoying, so... I can imagine the boss not per se annoying. <laughs> Essence of time gotten the first one we are going to get while swimming. <laughs> and that's the only reason why I want the second floor to be flooded while beating this guy. <laughs> you got the rolling sea, an essence of time. The mystical song of the sea roars into a crashing wave that sweeps heroes out into adventure. Oh please no, that is how Link's Awakening got started. <laughs> Not feeling like doing that again. Officially this is the same Link as from Link's Awakening, so... This guy should know how it works. Oh, you again. <laughs> Since you seem so relaxed, I've come with news. The Black Tower has already reached the heavens. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. Are we too late? Queen Ambi's tower. It is finished. Apparently that's how long it uh, takes us to actually clear these dungeons. <laughs> Magnificent sight. But also terrifying. And here she is. Ha 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 ha. The black tower is finally complete. Powers of darkness, come to me. Ah, the powers of darkness flow through me. The powers swell. Ha, ah, even without the powers of young Nehru, I can stop time. Now, true darkness comes. The sorrow of people shall be delivered to me, lighting my flame of sorrow. And here we go again. <laughs> okay, uh, why did two of them get turned into stone and not the third one? <laughs> and yet again, the animals also get affected. And this is bad news. None can stop Viren now. You can only wait. For the flame of sorrow to light. What a few. All humanity can feel the sorrow. 
<laughs> and the Mako tree also wants a word. <laughs> Saving Nehru isn't enough. Viren's deeds have changed the world, Trix. I cannot hear the last essence at all. But it must be somewhere in Labrina. No doubt. <laughs> I'm relying on you, Trix. Of course, as you may expect, the final essence is going to be a complete mystery. Hello? You have done so much for us. Our seas are clean, and all is well. I offer you our symbol of heroism, the Zora Scale. Oh, thank you. We get the Zora Scale. Well, at least we didn't do it for nothing. We got somewhat of a medal for it, you might say. <laughs> but like I was trying to say, of course, you may expect the eighth and final symbol is not going to be so easily obtained. For that one, we need to find out where it is ourselves. But before we start looking for it, it's time to actually clean up this area. Now all of the poison is gone, we can get all of the treasure. First of all, this chest over here. It was already visible from the fairy's woods. <laughs> but now we can finally get it. Next, I want to go to the past. There's a couple of caves we were not able to get before the poison was gone. Uh, let's go check my map. I need to go over here somewhere. Give me that. <laughs> and then right. This used to be poisoned water. It was impossible to actually swim here earlier. And here we can actually find an island. Of course the island is empty. And therefore saying we need to go here in the present. Let's go try it out. Yeah, we get into a secluded section, otherwise inaccessible, and here we want to dive. And that is our continuation. <laughs> Until we run into a dead end again, and then surface. Pretty well hidden chest. Also containing a ring, by the way. <laughs> awesome. Let's go see where we need to go next. Obviously not the final one. Our war point is still here, so no need to get the harp. And we are back. Okay, um... Where am I precisely? Over here. Okay, we need to go north. And then east. Uh, this is where the cave actually was, um... That we saw earlier in the present. Of course, because of the rock in front of it, it is not accessible in the present. But we can get to it in the past. And the moment you have your long switch, <laughs> you can actually get this ring over here. And that's indeed precisely the reason why I didn't want to do it before the dungeon. <laughs> Those other two wouldn't have been a problem, but this one would have been. So we can get ourselves three unique rings, because I'm pretty sure these are going to be unique ones. Not random ones, which you can only get from these chests. And now we want to go... Um to this section over here, we did see a bit um, of it already the moment we started going towards Crescent Island on our raft back then. <laughs> but now we actually want to go to the Sea of Storms. A place that was already mentioned in one of the signs. <laughs> but that is pretty much the only area we have not been to yet. But in order to get to it, we actually need something special. The seas beyond here swallow up all who venture into them. The Sea of Storms. I cannot allow a child like you to pass. Hey! The Zora scale? So, uh, your treaks. Oh, then you may pass. I know not what lies beyond. And I ask not why you must pass. <laughs> Fare you well. Yeah, indeed. As you can see, if you don't have the Zora scale, aka did not beat Dungeon 7 yet, <laughs> You're not allowed to go in here. But if you do have it, you can actually get to one of the final areas in this game, called the Sea of Storms. An area that is otherwise completely surrounded by whirlpools, <laughs> and therefore inaccessible other than this 
small little corridor. If you dive over here, you can actually find yourself a cave. Which will once again have a chest containing a ring. <laughs> so might as well bring this along. And that's the only thing we can do here other than continuing the story. So, let's go uh, do that. Continuing the story. Let's go surface over here. As you may remember, when we actually uh, ventured towards Crescent Island, we saw a pirate ship going around here. And that's actually still here. Of course it is. This is a secluded section, so there's no way out of here. <laughs> At least not with the ship. Interesting to find out what it is even doing here. Let's go talk to them. Oh, they seem to be undead pirates. <laughs> Tales tell of giant ruins out east in the Sea of No Return. The Sea of No Return. Hmm. Giant ruins. Sounds like things we need to remember. Captain isn't thinking about the thing. Captain. <laughs> How long have we been adrift? Um, quite long. Looking at your faces. <laughs> anyway, let's go talk to Captain. <laughs> Sail in the seas is every man's dream. It was great to so gallantly sail off to me dreams. But we got stuck in the sea of storms and can't get out. Har, you've got the Zora scale, sea charm. Aye, that could calm the sea of storms. How about you give me uh, that Zora scale? Oh, interesting. You can actually calm the sea. That does sound like a good idea for you guys to get out of here finally, so... <laughs> Thank ye. You're a good man. Ahoy, mateys. We are off to Olodrum, the land o' seasons. Aye, aye, sir. Thank ye. Now we can escape these seas. Take this as a sign o' me thanks. It is the jewel called the Toke Eyeball. It's said to be the thing that opens the way to the ancient tomb. I don't know if it is uh, true or not, though. <laughs> we get the Toke Eyeball. A treasure of the deep. You've really helped us out. Aye, we found that Toke Eyeball on Crescent Island. Maybe you should head that way? We're off now. Ahoy, mateys. Aye, aye, sir. It's interesting how they're mentioning that they're going to Holodrum, actually. That is going to be the land where Oracle of Seasons is going to take place. <laughs> so perhaps we can actually meet them there again. The moment our adventure over there will start. But for now, they actually gave us the Toke Eyeball. And are pointing us towards Crescent Island. It sounds like a logical spot to actually start looking. It is where the Toke live, after all. So a Toke Eyeball uh, does sound like uh, <laughs> something that belongs there. But before we go there, it's not a bad idea to actually um, check out our rings first, I think. So, let's go warp to the present. And hopefully not get stuck in a tree. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. No, just fine. <laughs> let's also get the chest that we can actually get in the family house. I know you can actually do a side quest with the family here, which will actually also continue on in Oracle of Seasons, but um, yeah, I'm actually not the biggest fan of um, doing the side quest, especially since it doesn't really give you a good reward. <laughs> so um, I'm unfortunately going to skip out on that. Perhaps if I ever redo this game as a let's play, or if a remake actually uh, comes out at some point. <laughs> but for now, I don't really feel like doing that side quest, so... It's already tedious enough to play these two games. <laughs> Let's see what we have. Like-like ring. Hmm. I don't think I actually want to look like a like-like, so... <laughs> but at least it's a new ring. Second. Green holy ring. No damage from electricity. Well, we just came from a lot of jellyfish enemies, so... <laughs> It would have been good to have earlier. Whimsical ring. Sword damage down, but sometimes is deadly. Ooh, that sounds like a very interesting one. <laughs> you do less damage, but sometimes you can actually one-shot enemies. Always. 
Red Holy Ring. I'm pretty sure we already have that one. Yeah, indeed. Next. Pegasus Ring. Lengthens Pegasus Seed effect. Yeah, it's also something I can imagine being handy. Next. And also final one. Green Luck Ring. Half damage from traps. Okay, that does not sound too interesting. <laughs> well, at least we got plenty of new ones. It does fill up our list a little bit. But for now, I think I'm going to call it quits. We do know what we need to do next in order to continue our adventure. Heading back towards Crescent Island. And meet our favorite species again in this series, the Toke. <laughs> See you folks next time. And Treeks out. Later, folks.